are you feeling right now? Depending on the time of day, you might be feeling hungry. Hunger is often the body's way of telling us we need nutrients. In this lab, we will conduct an experiment to determine the presence of certain nutrients. Nutrients are sources of nourishment needed by organisms to carry on metabolic processes, such as growth, reproduction, and cellular repair. The food we eat contains three types of nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. All three types of nutrients are vital to our growth and development, and it is important that we have a balance of nutrients in our diet. We cannot always look at a food source and tell what nutrients it contains. However, there are certain tests a researcher can perform to determine what nutrients are present in food. During this lab, we will be testing four unknown solutions to determine what nutrients are present in each solution. We have prepared test tubes with samples of the four unknown solutions. The samples have been labeled U1 for unknown solution 1, U2 for unknown solution 2, U3 for unknown solution 3, and U4 for unknown solution 4. Our first two nutrient tests will be for carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Glucose is a simple carbohydrate found naturally in honey and many fruits. To detect glucose in a solution, we use a chemical indicator called Benedict's solution. A chemical indicator is any chemical substance that indicates the presence of another substance by changing color. If glucose is present in a solution, Benedict's solution will turn the solution red. This is called a positive reaction. If no glucose is present, the color of the solution we are testing will remain unchanged. We add 10 drops of Benedict's solution to a sample of each of the unknown solutions. After adding the indicator, we swirl each test tube for a few seconds to mix the contents. To speed up the reaction of glucose with the Benedict's solution, we need to place the test tubes in a water bath. A water bath is a container of water used to keep a solution at a specific temperature. This water bath has been heated to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, or 71 degrees Celsius. The test tubes need to stay in the water bath for 10 minutes. For this lab, you will need to record your observations in a notebook or on separate paper. This will be your lab journal. While we wait for the test results, pause the video and set up your journal. It is time to remove the test tubes from the water bath and place them in this test tube rack. Let's examine the results. Remember, if glucose is present, the solution will turn red. Did any of the samples react? We see that unknown solution one turned red, which indicates that glucose is present in the solution. Since none of the other solutions reacted, we know that glucose is not present in those solutions. Record your observations in your lab journal. Our second nutrient test will be for starch, which is a complex carbohydrate. Starch is found in bread, pasta, corn, peas, beans, potatoes, and cereal grains such as rice, wheat, and oats. To detect starch in a solution, we use a chemical indicator called potassium triiodide solution. If starch is present in a solution, a positive reaction between potassium triiodide solution and starch will occur, and the solution we are testing will turn black. 
we add four drops of potassium triiodide solution to a sample of each of the unknown solutions. Next, we swirl each of the test tubes to mix the contents. The reaction should take about 30 seconds. Let's examine the results. Did any of the solutions turn black? The solution in the test tube containing unknown solution 3 turned black. Therefore, we know that starch is present. Since none of the other unknown solutions turned black, we know that starch is not present in those solutions. Record your observations in your lab journal. Our third nutrient test will be for proteins. Proteins are nutrients consisting of large organic molecules that are essential for life. Proteins provide structural support for cells, regulate metabolic processes, and transport nutrients and other substances throughout the body. Proteins are found in eggs, cheese, meat, peanut butter, and almonds. To detect proteins in a solution, we use a chemical indicator called Bayerette reagent. If proteins are present in a solution, a positive reaction between Bayerette reagent and protein will occur, and the solution we are testing will turn dark purple. We add 20 drops of Bayerette reagent to a sample of each of the unknown solutions. After adding the indicator, we swirl each of the test tubes to mix the contents. Let's examine the results. Did any of the solutions turn dark purple? Since unknown solution 2 and unknown solution 3 both turn dark purple, we know that proteins are present in both solutions. Since neither of the other two unknown solutions turned dark purple, we know that proteins are not present in those solutions. Record your observations in your lab journal. Our last nutrient test will be for lipids. Lipids, such as fats, waxes, and oils, are organic compounds that have a greasy feel and usually do not dissolve in water. Lipids are found in such foods as milk, cheese, butter, vegetable oil, shortening, red meat, and nuts. To detect lipids in a solution, we use a chemical indicator called Sudan-4. Sudan-4 is a red dye that turns any solution red, but if lipids are present in the solution, a positive reaction between Sudan-4 and lipids will occur, and the lipids will turn dark red. We add 20 drops of Sudan-4 to a sample of each of the unknown solutions. Since lipids do not easily dissolve in water, we need to shake the test tubes vigorously to mix the Sudan-4 with any lipids that might be in the solution. Any lipids present in a solution will eventually separate from the water in the solution if the solution is left undisturbed. When lipids separate from water in a solution, they form a layer of lipids on top of the water. Since lipids are less dense than water, they float on top of the water. If we see a dark red layer floating on top of the water, we know lipids are present in the solution. After waiting approximately five minutes, we examine the results. Notice that the sample containing unknown solution 4 has separated into a dark red layer above a lighter red layer. This means lipids are present in unknown solution 4. Since none of the other unknown solutions separated into layers, we know that lipids are not present in those solutions. Record your observations in your lab journal. From these tests, we now know that unknown solution 1 contains glucose. Unknown solution 2 contains protein. Unknown solution 3 contains starch and protein. 
and unknown solution 4 contains lipids. Now that we know how chemical indicators work to identify nutrients, we can put our knowledge to use in the next lab. In our next lab, we will demonstrate digestion and absorption of nutrients. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>